People who are inside supposedly serving you need to be reminded of that. In order that I am disciplined enough to not spend too much time speaking, how about that? Disciplined enough not to spend too much. What a novel concept. In order that I do not do that, because usually you give a preacher a microphone, he goes. And after half an hour, I'm obligated to take an offering. So, before the prayer, I did want to share these short words with you. To remind us all that this is a battle we have been fighting for 173 years. You must remember, my fellow citizens, that eternal vigilance by the people is the price of liberty. And that you must pay the price if you wish to secure the blessing. The Constitution cannot be maintained, nor the Union preserved in opposition to public feeling. By the mere exertion of the coercive powers confided to the general government. The foundations must be laid in the affections of the people. In the security it gives to life, liberty, character, and property in every quarter of the country. And there is perhaps no one of the powers conferred on the federal government so liable to abuse as the taxing power. Congress has no right under the Constitution to take money from the people unless it is required to execute some one of the specific powers entrusted to the government. And if they raise, if they raise more than is necessary for such purposes, it is an abuse of the power of taxation and unjust and oppressive. You have the highest of human trusts committed to your care. Providence has showered on this favored land blessings without number and has chosen you as the guardians of freedom to preserve it for the benefit of the human race. May he who holds in his hands the destinies of nations make you worthy of the favors he has bestowed and enable you with pure hearts and pure hands and sleepless vigilance to guard and defend to the end of time the great charge he has committed to your keeping. President Andrew Jackson in his farewell address in 1837. In 1789, our first President George Washington said in his inaugural address, it would be peculiarly improper to omit in this first official act my fervent supplications to that almighty being who rules over the universe, who presides in the councils of nations, and whose providential aids can supply every human defect that his benediction may consecrate to the liberties and happiness of the people of the United States. Likewise, therefore, it would be peculiarly improper for us to omit in beginning our gathering today our fervent supplications to Almighty God that he may bless our undertaking. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we come before you in humble repentance for having disregarded our duty as citizens of this great land to hold accountable those whom you granted us the freedom to elect as our leaders. And we beseech that you bless our present endeavor to restore honesty, integrity, fiscal responsibility, in humility to all those who swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that they would bear true faith and allegiance to the same. Lord, each and every man and woman proclaimed that they would faithfully discharge the duties of their office, so help me God, and yet so many have forgotten. 
It is our foremost purpose, indeed, our obligation to now remind them of their vows and promises. Almighty God, bless each and every person here today assembled that they will not turn in fear from the charge laid before them, but persevere from this day forward, remembering your words as they were recorded by the psalmist when he wrote, What joy for the nation whose God is the Lord. Amen. I warn who's ever next. I warn who's ever next. I can keep going. Thank you very much, Pastor. With that warning, let's host the flag, gentlemen. Present. 